Welcome to this week's edition of What's Up Weekly, where we bring you the latest news in 10 minutes or less. I'm Margo Andrews. And I'm Brittany Bradley. Most girls our age have heard a handful of cheesy pickup lines or not so suave moves, but did you know that the art of flirting can actually be used as a predictor of success in a romance? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Research from the University of Kansas has broken the flirting types into five categories, including physical, traditional, playful, polite, and sincere. Traditional flirts have men as the dominant role, and these people tend to have more long-lasting relationships. Physical flirts are more direct and have relationships that progress very quickly, and sincere are the most genuine in showing their affection. Playful are found to be the least successful overall in relationships. Playful flirts are thought to flirt mostly for the fun of the game and to boost their own self-confidence. The findings in the study are found to be debatable by some because levels and meaning of flirting change through age groups, so it may not be a good predictor after all. So what is the actual worst or corniest pickup line you've ever heard? Oh my goodness. Okay, one time some guy was next to me and he goes, let's count shoulders. One, <laughs> two, three, four. Oh boy. Did it work for you? No. Yeah, not me either. Work. I like my space. Me well, it's either laziest and its finest or just about one of the coolest inventions ever. A vending machine that uses facial recognition to select the food item for you. The machines developed by J.R. East Water Business Company uses large touch panel screens with sensors to determine the characteristics of the approaching customer, recognizing their gender and age. Recommended labels appear on the drink products and also vary according to day, time, and temperature. For instance, if the customer is a man, a recommended label might appear on a canned coffee drink. If the man appears to be in the 50s, this label might move to a green tea. A woman in her 20s is likely to be recommended a tea or a sweeter product because according to market research, women are shown to prefer these items. The mini machines have tripled sales and the company is expected to position more machines throughout the Tokyo area. I feel like if you were to approach one of those machines, there'd be like one label on water because you pretty much shut down every other it option. Be, it wouldn't work for me because I don't like anything. So if it's trying to suggest things for me, it just would make me mad. You're way too picky. I know. <laughs> Can't help it. Well, Move Over Soft Films, the Paranormal Activity franchise, is trying to take over the annual Holly Halloween movie release with the announcement of their third installment in the series, set to come out next October. After Paranormal Activity racked the box office, profiting $200 million, and the second movie followed close behind, profiting $150 million, it only makes sense for the filmmakers to create yet another moneymaker. The big question with Movie 3 is whether or not the found film format will work again to create another horrifying supernatural experience. Will we find out in Paranormal Activity 3 what the scratches on the door meant, or where, the where, where are the whereabouts of Katie and Hunter? Only time will tell. The movie's premiere date is set for October 21st, 2011. I'm not going to lie, I still haven't seen the, the second one, and I fell asleep during the first one. Yeah, I was sitting there twiddling my thumbs, kind of staring at the ceiling. The first one was not scary to me at all. It wasn't, but it wasn't good. Did you see it in theater? I didn't. I didn't see it in theater either. I, saw I think it. that kills it. I don't know. But in more movie news, Hollywood's newest risky movie, Burlesque, opens in theaters this week. The movie has quite the impressive formula that will make it hard to fail. First, you have celebrities galore to make up the cast. Cher leads the film playing Tess, who is a former dancer and now club owner of the venue who struggles with trying to keep business going despite financial flaws. Christina Aguilera is the other leading lady playing Allie. Allie has just moved to Los Angeles from Iowa and is hired as a waitress at the venue. She quickly grows a passion for the art of burlesque and eventually makes it on stage to become a star. Other cast members you may know include former Dancer with the Stars Ju dancer Julian Hu, Grey's Anatomy Eric Dane, and film and television actress Kristen Bell. The other factor of the movie that is sure to make it a success is all of the exotic dancing and costumes used in the film. I know the dancing itself is the main reason I want to see it, and the cast spent months training for the dance choreography used in the film, and were some of the most striking outfits while doing it. Burlesque officially open, comes out today, November 24th. You know, I actually really want to see that. I've been the biggest fan of Christina Aguilera for so long, and I'm proud of her. She's coming a long way from genie in a bottle. She really has, and let's just hope it goes better than some other singers who have tried to make it on the big screen. Yeah. I'm pulling for it. She's having a rough life right now. Yeah, that separation and all that drama. I know. Ooh. Let's hope Christina can get a win here. <laughs> I hope. We'll go see it. We will. <laughs> we have a quick rundown of the sports world this week at IU. The IU football team lost to Penn State 41-24, leaving their record at 4-7 overall and 0-7 in the Big Ten. They'll play the fi their final game this of the season this Saturday at Purdue University for the annual Open Bucket game. The IU men's basketball team played against the University of Evansville Sunday, defeating the Purple Aces 67-54. The win allows the Hoosier team to continue their winning streak, leaving them 4-0. The women's basketball team lost to Georgia 84-51, giving them a record of four wins and two losses. The men's soccer team beat Tulsa on Sunday night with a score of 5-1. 
This win moves the soccer team into the next round of the NCAA tournament, and the team continues with a record of 9, 7, and 2. Our men's soccer team is really dominating right now. I know. I'm kind of bummed I never made it out to a game. I actually did. Yeah, you go to all the soccer games and none of the basketball games. I'm going to one right after break. It's on my to-do list. Yeah, when I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> and to finish this past weekend in sports, let's take a look at my favorite NFL team and wrap up their devastating loss on Sunday. The Colts took on longtime rival the New England Patriots Sunday afternoon at Gillette Stadium. Here is some footage from previous matchups between the two teams. I knew it wasn't a good sign for Pepe when he threw his first interception of the game during the first quarter. And things only got worse for the Colts. Manning threw his second interception of the game late in the third quarter, allowing the Patriots to start the fourth with the ball in their possession. But he wouldn't be the NFL's best quarterback if he didn't make some comeback throughout the game. Manny was able to throw a third touchdown of the game late in the fourth quarter to Blair White to cut the Patriots' lead to 31-28 with only four minutes to play. And Malcolm the part when I was screaming at the TV almost in tears. Payne ended the game by throwing an interception to James Samuels to finalize a New England victory. So sad. Oh, I'm sorry, but I know I'm really not football literate, but who's Payback? <laughs> Pepe is a nickname I give Peyton. Okay, so that's not like a world known thing? No, I don't think so. I think it's just something I do. I just, I love Peyton, so I'm always like, come on, Pepe. It's kind of a stupid nickname, I'm not gonna lie. Thanks, Margo. You're so sweet. Loving ya. Well, with, <laughs> this week we're changing things up a bit and having special guests on the show with us today. With numerous people here at Indiana University studying abroad, we know you have to worry about the new culture, the food, finding your way around, the list never ends. And you clearly are going to be stressed out enough and worrying about relationships on top of everything else is just out of the question. Good news, we have a relationship expert with us on the show today. Catherine Chloe Cahoon is the author of The Single Girl's Guide to Meeting European Men, and in her book she outlines 40 proven tips for meeting and interacting with European men. Her book also includes the hotspots for finding men in different countries, and even has real-life stories from Cahoon's own experiences in Europe. Hi Catherine, thanks for joining us today. My first question is, how in the world did you come up with an idea like this for a book? Well, I had an international major at Vanderbilt University, so it gave me the opportunity to study abroad every single summer, and I honestly wanted to learn the culture and perfect my foreign language skills, so I sought out the natives. But it was my girlfriends who urged me to write the book, and it was funny because every time I would return to school in the fall, they would ask me just a million questions about the European men and they didn't even seem to care about the culture, which isn't a good thing. You should care about the culture. <laughs> exactly. And in the book you say that the single girl's guide to meeting European men will help turn girls European male fantasy into reality. Does this work for American boys too or is this just easier to understand European men? Well many of the tips in my book do work on American men as well as European men. My friend and I found something interesting with the European men. They tend to be more drawn to a girl's personality than her physical features. So I always tell women that they don't have to be Barbie lookalikes at all to appeal to them. Yeah, there's really not a red-headed Barbie, so I'm glad about <laughs> Good that. Thing, right? <laughs> but um, you also note in the book that the guide you created isn't just for finding love, it can be used for anything in between, is that correct? That is correct. I want any girl to be able to complete her goals. Okay, and then I want to talk about the videos. I keep seeing on YouTube that you have all these videos you published, and they've already received thousands of views, so I'm going to go ahead and show one now. Hi, I'm Catherine. I wrote the book, The Single Girl's Guide to Meeting European Men. Girls often ask me why it is that they have so much more success with men in Europe than at home. I think it's because travelers take on this carefree attitude. I have this girlfriend who's normally super shy. At home, guys act like she is a potted plant. At dance clubs, dancing isn't generally in her repertoire. She does what I call the pendulum move. So what are the point of the videos you produce? Are they real? Are they meant to be more of a joke? Why did you make them? They're meant to be totally funny and my publisher advised me to create a blog, and she said that I could even just quote parts of my book, but since my readers are buying my book, I wanted to give them something more. So I decided to create these short videos, and I wanted them to be fun and funny book teasers, and they're meant to be over the top. You know, I have all the posing and the dressing up, 
but I also wanted them to include some actual information and sentiments, kind of like I really did have a girlfriend who, before going to Europe, she was so shy. And I don't know what happened to this girl, but when she entered a European club, she became completely uninhibited, just a hot tamale. And the guys found her carefree attitude very appealing. Wow. Well, that's actually kind of interesting. Maybe that'll happen to me, but... Hopefully. <laughs> well, you've had a lot of success with your book and the videos. And what's this to hear about a screenplay you're starting? Right now I'm working with Hollywood producers on the movie adaptation and I am quite excited about it. Great, well that's all the time we have. Thank you so much Catherine for joining us today. Margo's actually going abroad to London next semester. Do you have any tips for success for her? Oh, London is so much fun. Um, a big tip is that the Brits tend to be goal oriented. So Marco, if you want to meet them, I wouldn't advise engaging them during the day because their minds will be focused on their work, but at night when they're in a social environment, their minds will be 100% on meeting people. So you'll have such a great time. So you have to bring out the personality at night, Marco. Okay, I mean, I have a personality all the time, but uh, maybe I'll- You I'll, do. I'll, well, thank you. I'll bring this with me and <laughs> Hopefully, you know, have good luck. Hopefully. Well, thanks again. Best of luck in the future. And we now leave you with this week's YouTube video of the week. Have a good Thanksgiving. Thank you, you too. What's going on? No.